Women in menopause often struggle with decreased sexual desire. I get emails, survey responses, YouTube comments about this topic all the time. But what exactly can you do about that? It's maybe an uncomfortable topic. Maybe we'd rather just avoid that topic and hope it'll go away. But my conversations with women in menopause kind of tell me that it's not going away. So let's talk about it. I'm Steve Goldring from SimpleHormones.com. I help patients and healthcare practitioners with easy to understand patient education resources, mostly about hormones and hormone optimization. You may have noticed that I post videos about all kinds of hormone related topics, but most of those are focused on menopause. Once you transition into menopause, your hormones can have a profound effect on the way you feel about your partner and vice versa. It's a hard fact to face, but divorce rates increase after menopause. There may be lots of reasons for that, but you can also imagine how the long list of menopause symptoms might be contributing to the breakdown of marriages. Things like mood swings and irritability, weight gain and body image concerns, insomnia and feeling just exhausted all the time, maybe a downward spiral of anxiety and depression, not to mention direct sexual uh, symptoms like vaginal dryness and painful intercourse. Is it any wonder that you might have a major loss of sex drive? Well, as the husband of a woman in menopause, I can tell you that my responses to my wife's symptoms weren't all that helpful, especially early on. So maybe you just hate your husband or it feels like you do sometimes. It's clear that you need a comprehensive approach to the symptoms of menopause because it affects everything in your life, including your relationship. Of course, you can do yoga, you can take herbs, you can reduce carbs and wine and chocolate and dairy and gluten and whatever else in your diet. You can drink herbal teas, dress in layers, meditate. You can even go to counseling and work on yourself and on your relationship. From my personal experience, that's really helpful and super important. But unless you address your basically non-existent hormones, you may not see as much of a difference in the way you feel. The hormone that has the biggest impact on sex and marriage is testosterone. And while the FDA has approved lots of testosterone products for men, there's a total of zero for women. I recently posted a video about a study that used testosterone pellets inserted under the skin for women. In that study, the women on testosterone had 39% less breast cancer than age-matched controls. What I didn't mention in that video was the improvement those women experienced in a couple of sexual desire surveys after they started taking testosterone. Aphrodite stands for a phase three research study of female sexual dysfunction in women on testosterone patch without estrogen. Terrible study title. But the Aphrodite randomized placebo controlled clinical trial gave 814 women one of two treatments either a placebo or a testosterone patch. And the testosterone patches were of two doses. One was 150 micrograms and the other was 300 micrograms. The women were required to not be on estradiol, progesterone, or any other hormone replacement therapy for the duration of the study. These women were followed for a year, some of them up to two years, the Aphrodite trial focused on two major outcomes. The first was sexual satisfaction, and the second was personal distress, especially around sex. The women were given two scientifically validated surveys. One was called the Profile of Female Sexual Function, and the other called the Personal Distress Scale. At the beginning of the study, the average satisfaction rating was about 50%, meaning women felt satisfied with sex about half the time. That 50% kind of lines up with something called hypoactive sexual desire disorder, or HSDD. So the study was about bumping up women's sexual satisfaction. Women taking the lower dose of testosterone, 150 micrograms, reported an improvement in their sexual satisfaction from 50% up to 65%. But the women who took the higher dose went from 50% up to 78%, so substantially higher. The study also checked out the frequency of satisfying sex episodes for these women. Women taking the higher testosterone dose went from 0.7 satisfying experiences a week up to 2.1 on average per week. Women taking the lower dose went from 0.7 to 1.2 encounters per week, which wasn't considered statistically significant, but it was an increase. 
When it came to side effects, there weren't any real surprises. Increased hair growth was about the same for placebo and the 150 microgram low-dose testosterone patients. Unwanted hair grew almost twice as much in the 300 microgram high-dose patients. Acne was about the same for placebo and testosterone in both doses. Same with hair loss and voice deepening issues, about the same for the placebo in both doses. Quite a few patients had reactions to the patches that were identical for the placebo and testosterone patches, which makes sense, they're the same patches. About 10.6% of the women on the higher dose had small amounts of vaginal bleeding. It was more than the placebo or the low testosterone groups. Mild clitoral enlargement developed in one woman in the, on the 150 and in three women on the 300. In all, there were four women with clitoral enlargement, but none of them dropped out of the study, so it must not have been that bad. Breast cancer was diagnosed in three women in the testosterone groups between four and 12 months after the treatment started. That's a pretty small number considering 814 women altogether. Now, one of those women actually had some symptoms that might have indicated breast cancer before the study started that she failed to tell the researchers. So here's a quote from the research team about their conclusions for the Aphrodite study. 300 micrograms of testosterone per day significantly improved sexual function and decreased distress in postmenopausal women who weren't receiving estrogen therapy. The increase in the frequency of satisfying sexual episodes was modest, but appeared to be clinically meaningful. These findings indicate that estrogen or combined estrogen and progestin are not required for testosterone to be effective in the treatment of hypoactive sexual desire disorder. Additional data are needed to assess the long-term safety of testosterone use in women with estrogen depletion. Well, speaking of long-term safety, my previous video about the Dayton study talks about that since that testosterone study followed, followed women taking it for up to 10 years. I'll put a link to that video at the end of this one. This study hasn't led to an FDA-approved testosterone patch for women yet. Maybe someday. But it does clearly show that testosterone, even by itself, has a significant dose-related effect on sexual satisfaction for women. The higher dose worked better and had slightly more side effects, but they appear to be pretty manageable. If you're interested in testosterone for hypoactive sexual desire disorder, your best bet is to find a hormone optimization specialist. They'll understand about testing testosterone for women, deciding whether you really need it, prescribing testosterone. They'll know about the best dosage forms to use in your particular case, what to do if you have side effects like unwanted hair growth or vaginal bleeding or something else. Click the link on this video that says find a specialist. That link will send you to my website where you can request a patient referral. I'll check my hormone provider database to see if there's a specialist near you. I can't guarantee that I know somebody in your town, but I'll give it my best shot. If this video has been helpful at all, click the like and subscribe buttons. You'll also want to get notified anytime I post a new one, so ding that little bell and you won't miss the ones I put out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll look forward to talking with you again soon.